It's here, team. The week the Democrats have been waiting for, and really the media too, so they can openly fawn over the Democrats on another day that ends in Y. It's the Democratic National Convention, and all those pretending to be excited about their dead candidate are out to boost their careers. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Andrew Cuomo, Bernie, Michelle, and the rest of them. I'm Katie Petrick, and this is Healthy Republic. Woo! It's the DNC convention. Not that anyone actually cares. We have kids, work, and real lives to lead. But I'm here to give you the lowlights from the first two days of a convention that does not compute. We the people call the 48th Quadrennial Democratic National Convention to order. The suspense. I'll start with the single best highlight. On night one, it was actually great to see the youth and representatives of the various states and territories singing the national anthem. And not a one of them kneeled. But before we think maybe the DNC does care about America, they did encourage people earlier in the day during the youth council meeting to kneel if they must. You may rise or kneel if you are able for your preference. The future of America, just whatevs. The convention got pretty awkward and boring for most of the rest of the night. Let's be honest, politicians thrive when they have adoring fans there to applaud them. Sans that, and it just sounds scripted and uncomfortable. Just ask Representative Gwen Moore. Hi, I'm Gwen Moore, and it's my honor to represent Milwaukee in Congress and to kick off the 2020 Democratic Convention. Oh, I sure wish you all were here in the city of Milwaukee. As someone from the cheese state of Wisconsin, I can say you do not want to be in the city of Milwaukee. I mean, unless you like visiting the northern version of Chicago. But Gwen, tell us why we're here. Oh, what better way to gather than all across America to nominate my beloved friend, Joe Biden, to be 46th president of the United States of America with my VIP, VP nominee sister, Kamala Harris, by his side. Except not really by his side because, you know, six feet and all of that. And so began the fake enthusiasm for nominating Joe Biden. The theme of the first night was We the People. Leadership was the following night's theme, and that's why New York Governor Andrew Cuomo had to speak the previous night. That didn't stop him from massaging his ego and, of course, blaming President Trump. Donald Trump didn't create the initial division. The division created Trump. He only made it worse. Our collective strength is exercised through government. It is, in effect, our immune system and our current federal government is dysfunctional and incompetent. It couldn't fight off the virus. In fact, it didn't even see it coming. Okay, so it's Trump's fault for not knowing that China would create a virus that would spread across the world. And it's your fault, personally, viewer at home, for bringing in Trump, which created all the racism and division in the country. Tell me again, how many people died in the past few months under your watch, Cuomo? We have actual numbers, and while you say it's just just over 6,000 in the nursing homes alone. But you know, it's more a few more thousand grandmas and grandpas who all got killed by ordering them back into the infestation. But I forgot, it's all Trump's fault. Okay, who's better? We the people deserve a president who believes in science, that recognizes the threat of COVID, who has a plan to get us through it. And that is Joe Biden. And that is the worst acting you have done, Eva. And I've seen her in the Sentinel, trust me. So little policy and all the feelings filled the rest of the night, leading up to the block of wood, standing in front of many other blocks of wood, trying to convince his block bros to support Joe Biden because, hey, they are still being radical, comrades. Many of the ideas we fought for that just a few years ago were considered radical are now mainstream. But let us be clear, if Donald Trump is reelected, all the progress we have made will be in jeopardy. At its most basic, this election is about preserving our democracy. And this is how people felt about his speech and his improper use of calling us a democracy when we are a constitutional republic. But I digress. <laughs> Awkward. 
And that led to former First Lady Michelle Obama's fireside chat, in which she tried to pull, basically, an Obama. She claimed that you simply cannot fake your way through this job. And yet, she faked her sincerity throughout the entire speech, reinserting her claim that when they go low, we go high. Being president doesn't change who you are. It reveals who you are. Well, a presidential election can reveal who we are, too. And four years ago, too many people chose to believe that their votes didn't matter. Maybe they were fed up. Maybe they thought the outcome wouldn't be close. Maybe the barriers felt too steep. Maybe they didn't want Hillary Clinton. Obama's entire speech was an emotional appeal in which she stressed being empathetic, but she so clearly is not empathetic toward Donald Trump and would rather just throw a little shade. So let me be as honest and clear as I possibly can. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. He has had more than enough time to prove that he can do the job, but he is clearly in over his head. He cannot meet this moment. He simply cannot be who we need him to be for us. It is what it is. For someone who said during her speech that she hates politics, she's all politics. Of course, like wet kisses from a dog, the media is slobbering all over the convention, and more specifically, Michelle Obama, showing their Obama love fest continues. Now, before we go into the second night, we must first remember that the second night of the 2004 convention was when Barack Obama made the speech the Democrats still we themselves when heard. Now, even as we speak, there are those who are preparing to divide us. The spin masters, the negative ad peddlers, who embrace the politics of anything goes. Well, I say to them tonight, there is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. Oh, if only that were true. But we don't live in a United States. An e pluribus unum. Out of many, one. Our founders had that. They formed it for us. And most of us in the sticks still want that. But we've been told by many of those who were representing the DNC that all we are is a bunch of racist, sexist, bigoted homophobes who lack empathy. And that was like a hot five seconds ago. Here's your word soup version of just that. A movement striving to recognize and repair the wounds of racial injustice, colonization, misogyny, and homophobia and to propose and build reimagined systems of immigration and foreign policy that turn away from the violence and xenophobia of our past. Gobbledygook. It's only fitting that the party's next little G-god speak on Tuesday night of the 2020 convention, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was on to second the nomination of Comrade Sanders, whose policies have been completely taken up by the Democrats. I will say, I was a little disappointed that AOC was not putting together IKEA furniture or making a chili in her DC apartment, which would have been much more enjoyable and perhaps instructional than the word soup that she just served up. But the word alliteration from a former president who knows that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself was blasphemous. You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years? Blame, bully, and belittle. And you know what Joe Biden will do? Build back better. More like babble, bow, beguile. But tell me more, Billy, about the buck and being in the Oval Office with Monica Lewinsky hiding under your desk. At a time like this, the Oval Office should be a command center. Instead, it's a storm center. There's only chaos. Just one thing never changes. His determination to deny responsibility and shift the blame. The buck never stops there. Let's get to a highlight, because that was a solid lowlight. During the roll call vote to nominate Joe Biden on Tuesday night, each state and territory was given about a minute to speak. And Rhode Island, I have a new respect for you, as well as a craving. And our state appetizer, calamari, is available in all 50 states. Hot dang! Well, the awkwardness continued, per always, involving Joe Biden. Joe, you've just become the official nominee for president. How do you feel? And he wasn't done being awkward. After his wife Jill gave a rather innocuous speech at the end of the night, Joe had to step in and just be weird. 
<laughs> hey everyone, I'm Jill Biden's husband. <clears throat> As you heard tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see why she's the love of my life, the rock of our family. She never gives herself much credit, but the truth is, <laughs> she's the strongest person I know. She's a backbone like a ramrod. Think of your favorite educator who gave you the confidence to believe in yourself. That's the kind of first lady, 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 this Jill Biden will be. <laughs> Before we end this pain, let's ramp down with some calming notes brought to the convention by Billy Porter and his rendition of For What It's Worth. There's battle lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Everybody is wrong. The Democrats put out what they believe to be a winning message of we care about America. But behind the scenes, the message remains, our radical agenda is full steam ahead. That's why they're only sort of talking about Joe Biden. Instead, focusing entirely on the message of, big orange man is so, so very bad. Here's the positive and negative. The convention is halfway over, and the convention is only halfway over. Until next time, stay healthy, America.